a lot of the topics that you cover in year two are built on your year one knowledge. So this next point is something that I can't stress the importance of. Hey guys, I'm Uwe, I'm a first year medical student at the University of Nottingham and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, head over to my Instagram at uwaisabar.com underscore and feel free to check out my website to find out a bit more about me. In today's video, like I said with the video on a of biology, I did film this like end of August, start of September, but it didn't go well. So now I'm filming it again five months later because I believe this video is going to be useful for you guys and it's going to help you. It's been well over a year now since I last sat any sort of A-level exam because my exams were cancelled so the last thing that I did was pretty much my mocks back in February but luckily I planned this video at the time that A-level knowledge was still pretty much fresh in my mind so I'm just gonna read this list and give you my tips and my advice for A-level chemistry. So the first thing is to always have a data sheet. This is your chemistry bible and I advise that you keep this data sheet in your day folder. I've talked about having a day folder in another video and I'll link it either somewhere on the screen or I'll link it down below. Even if you haven't got a chemistry lesson and you're just in college, you've got it for revision. It's better you get used to the one that's for your specification and get used to using a physical copy rather than using one that's on a computer, for example, or on your iPad, because in the exam, you're not gonna have a computer or an iPad there. That's if you're doing physical exams, not online exams. Don't try and catch me out. Next tip, you wanna have a sound knowledge of your year one topics. This is similar to that's in the biology video, but because it's just, is necessary especially with a level chemistry a lot of the topics that you cover in year two are built on your year one knowledge for example when you come into organic chemistry a lot of it is built on your knowledge of like um oh my god i can't remember anything ah! of like hydrocarbons um uh, what's it called transitions oh my god my mind goes so blank but just know that a lot of your year two chemistry is built on what you learn in year one. And to be honest, it's quite obvious because a large part of year one is called foundation in chemistry. And with those stuff, you're only gonna get tests on those explicitly if you were to do AS. But if you're doing the full A level as opposed to AS, it's incorporated into your year two knowledge. So the exam questions are pretty much based around the year two content and the year two stuff. So this next point is something that I can't stress the importance of like, or the next two points but seriously just know your mechanisms know how they work know when they're used know what changes which bonds are breaking which bonds are formed you've got those five mechanisms you need to learn and they're going to be repeated across the question so if you can learn the basic format you can just apply that to the questions and get yourself seriously easy marks in the exam so yeah i said the next two points are things that i can't stress the importance of First one, know your mechanisms. Second one, know your reagents and conditions. With your mechanisms and your reagents and conditions, you're gonna come across everything you need to know by year two. I'd say, depending on how your course is structured, but for me, it was about January, February that we knew all the reagents and conditions that we needed to know and all the mechanisms that we needed to know. And that's because at that point, we'd finished organic chemistry. Reagents and conditions, your mechanisms are gonna come up in your organic chemistry paper, which is a paper within itself. If you can learn that, you can smash that. That is easy marks on your exam. I remember my chemistry teacher saying that one time just to stress the importance of knowing your mechanisms and your reagency conditions he counted the marks that you could get on a paper but just from knowing your reagency conditions and it was something like 20 marks and the difference between an a and an a star is like 10 marks and the difference between a and a b is about 10 marks as well so between b and your a star that's 20 marks learning reagency conditions you go from a b to an a star potentially i apologize if the angles changed slightly or if the lighting's changed um it's got a bit gloomy outside and i take like an hour break to charge my camera up but let's carry on with the video so you want to know key information at the back of your hand so an example of what i mean with key information is like there's going to be key peaks that you're always going to see in spectroscopy such as you see double o h bond or you see double bond o or your o h or you see o but these are key peaks that are going to make it easy to identify the structures don't look for things like CH bond because they're always going to be there and they're not going to help you get a final structure. You're going to get better at this through lots and lots of practice of doing past exam questions. You're going to realise how much I love past exam questions and how beneficial, how useful they are. Another bit of key information, again, it's like your reaching condition. I really stress the importance of that. And then you've got uh, 
um, transition metals. If you learn the key transition metals, that's you side because the colours are never going to change for the associated metals. And then my next point is to know the maths involved in A-level chemistry. I don't at all mean sound condescending or to sound... What's the word? Oh, it begins an I. Intimidating. I don't want to mean sound condescending or intimidating, but it is quite basic maths involved in A-level chemistry. You're given the formula, learn the formula, and it's the same few formulas that you've got to apply over and over and over again. Probably the hardest one is Arrhenius equation. And to be honest, it's actually not even that hard. It's just I've never enjoyed maths. So to look at such a weird equation scares me. So for me, it seems like a hard equation, but honestly, it's not that bad. After each topic and throughout each topic, really, as you're learning, you want to complete your learning and consolidate your knowledge with past exam questions. If you go and visit a maths tutor or you go on Maths Made Easy, they have question banks for each subtopic. And I really recommend that you go on those, you make the most of those. And once you complete the questions, make flashcards of exam perfect answers on the math scheme. The math scheme is never ever going to change. All exam boards are going to do are just repeat the same questions over the years with slightly different wording or even just repeat the same question full stop. Learning exam perfect answers word for word is an absolute godsend. You're going to go into the exam pretty much knowing the answer, so you have to tweak it every so often where relevant. Complete past exam questions and also complete full past papers. I recommend doing this under under time conditions and then I also recommend having a specific marking technique I've talked about this in um, another video which I'll link above and I'll also link my biology a video because I go into a bit more detail about one way I used to mark my exam questions. Finally in the last bit of this video I'm going to talk to you about how I revised both in first and second year of college so I'm going to read it just straight off my phone just to save time but in year one I used ready-made powerpoints that one of our teachers at college very kindly made. It was for AS but at this point we technically were learning AS content when it came to a level exam questions. I just apply my knowledge as suited. So I use ready-made PowerPoint and we'll just learn each slide word for word. I did this using my scribble method technique, which I think I've talked about in another video. I will just still read it out so you know what it was. So I'd read over a slide several times and then I'd write it out in a scrap notebook several times and then I'd say it several times and then I'd move on about four slides before coming back and then revisiting that first initial slide and the second slide and the third slide and so on. I would take my laptop into college with me and pretty much everywhere I went with me so I could then revise these PowerPoint when I was on my way to college on the bus before I could drive um, in my free periods or I just actually recall the PowerPoints from memory and I literally knew the PowerPoints in the back of my hand. I'd also revise using AS past papers because at the time of first year we were learning AS content and these PowerPoints were pretty much just exam questions made into flashcards in a PowerPoint. So I was getting near enough full marks each time I would do the AS papers. So yeah, that's just one way of emphasizing the importance of learning exam questions and active recall really, that's the main technique that I used. So in year two, I started making my revision notes by hand for chemistry and psychology. I just found making it by hand would save so much time was so much quicker. And I would do past papers, do multiple questions. I'd flashcard anything that I got wrong and I just learned the answer, especially with reagents and conditions and your mechanisms. I'd flashcard those, I'd learn them from PowerPoints that I'd made or that my teachers had made. And something that I found really useful was on OCR, they've got like links with spider diagrams and mind maps. So I'd just learn those mind maps and spider diagrams and they have like plain copies as well. So I'd fill out the plain copies. And I didn't remember that I missed off, I'd fill out in a difficult like red, for example. I think it's thunderstorming. Anyway, so I'd fill it out, anything that I had missed off, I'd make a note of in red. And the last thing that I'm going to tell you that I did, I only did this in year two, and I only, honestly, I can't stress this enough, I only recommend you do this if you feel you are comfortable and you feel confident enough to do this. But I got ahead of the classroom learning and teaching, and this just benefited me so much more. And I effectively used my classroom lessons as a revision and to consolidate my knowledge. So, for example, in the Christmas holidays, I finished organic chemistry and then we finished it like I want to say the third or fourth week of January in college and then I finished the chemistry course about three weeks before lockdown oh really nice car I just drove past 
sorry. Um, I finished the chemistry course about three weeks before lockdown. So I was literally three weeks ahead. And like I said, it just benefited me so much more. I was working at my own pace. If I didn't understand, I'd clarify with my teacher in college um, and I could sort of my knowledge by going over it again in lesson. The way I did this was by using Snap Revise. Um, I'd also recommend that you look at CGP revision guides. But yeah, I literally only recommend this for year two. And if you feel that it's something that you can do and you feel confident about handling the content and you can teach yourself it correctly and understand it well enough. Thank you guys guys so much for watching that video i hope you enjoyed and i hope it was useful please do leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out more on my uploads i've got loads of videos planned to help with your med application for anyone out there who is an aspiring medic and then also on my instagram page i give you loads of advice as well so head over there and drop me a follow this is the end of the video so i shall see you in my next one bye guys <laughs>